Uh, welcome uh, to this seventh meeting in 2015 of the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee. And I remind everyone to switch off mobile phones as they affect the broadcasting system. Uh, agenda item one is uh, for the committee to take evidence from Bruce Crawford, MSP, on the proposed cross-party group on tourism. I welcome Bruce Crawford uh, to the meeting and invite Bruce to make any opening statements about the purpose of the group. Thank you much, Convener, and delighted to be here. I, I'll take a couple of minutes only just to say a few words. Uh, 2014 was a remarkable year for Scottish tourism. Uh, the Commonwealth Games, the Ryder Cup, Armed Forces Day, uh, the hugely successful Bannockburn Live, to name but a few. There were a thousand other events that I'm aware of attracting over two million attendees. And as we all know, the industry is one of the key economic contributors to the Scottish economy. Overnight visitors spend of over 4.5 billion annually Day visitors spend 6.2 billion, accounting for 200,000 direct jobs. By 2020, the plan to grow overnight visitors spend to between 5.5 and 6.5 billion pounds. So 2014 was a champagne year, and there are big plans for the future. Now, it struck me towards the end of 2014, that remarkable year, that despite the vital importance of tourism to the Scottish economy, no cross-party group existed to help support the industry. I believe there was one in the early days of the Parliament, but I think there's a glaring hole in the architecture of cross-party groups in the Parliament. But why the need? Uh, it's important that one of our biggest industries has a parliamentary focus to discuss how to grow and develop the tourism product. It will create opportunities for tourism players to meet with MSPs to improve politicians' understandings of that key industry, enable the tourist industry to have an improved awareness themselves of the influences or constraints of governmental and parliamentary framework. I can see some early work of the cross-party group being involved in the 2020 strategy and a greater understanding about its impact and how it will be delivered. There are skills get gaps issues to be addressed and a number of sectoral challenges. I already have indication of 10 MSPs from across the political parties who have already indicated support. I'm confident that will grow. Um, 90 organisations throughout Scotland have contacted me about this to say they would wish to be a member of the cross-party group. Of these, 50 are of national or regional organisations um, who have approached me. I am aware there are some potential crossovers with other cross-party groups, but I am confident we can be complementary rather than competitive. I am happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you very much. Do members have questions? Good morning, uh, uh, Bruce Crawford. Uh, nice to see you before us this morning. Um, just a, a question about the overlaps that you, you mentioned there. Um, I was convener of a group uh, that was called the Psoriasis and Psoriatic Arthritis Group, and uh, other folk with uh, skin conditions approached me to form a second group to deal with other skin conditions. And after a period of discussion with the existing group, not without its difficulties, I'm <coughs> I would have to add, uh, we came to agreement eventually we would form a new group that would broaden the remit of the existing group. Uh, and the new group is called the Skin and Associated Rheumatic Conditions Group. And we're getting more people coming along and we're looking at the whole range of skin conditions. So that was an example of one group transforming itself and broadening out because I felt to have two groups wouldn't be particularly beneficial. And it's just when I look at there's a, you know, the, the other groups where you might have an overlap with golf, for instance, and recreational boating and marine tourism. Is there any reason you think why these two particular uh, groups couldn't come together under the umbrella of, of your group. Um, both of these, I would suggest, might fit quite nicely in with it. Well, it's not for me to make a decision about whether these groups would be appropriately fall within the, the remit of the cross-party group in tourism. Uh, obviously, individual MSPs have come to this committee or, 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 or some, gone through some other similar process and been able to... to provide Parliament with evidence that these particular areas have got a distinct niche. Um, I, I would be relaxed if, the, if these groups wished to go in that direction, but that would be entirely a matter for them. Um, although 
the, the, on page two of your own report where, where the, the various groups are outlined, I, I can't imagine that the Scottish Economy Cross-Party Working Group would want to become embedded into the tourism group, but there are others where it would be it may be a, p a potential um, area where they would want to think about that. Would be entirely up to them if they would want to do that. Mm -hmm. Would um, if the committee suggested that there might be discussions between the conveners of those two groups and yourself, would that be something you'd be amenable to? I'm always amenable to discussions with people who, uh, in, in circumstances like that, and if it was to lead to something positive, then fair enough. But I don't want them to see in any way that this is a threat to their particular cross-party groups. I don't feel it is. Margaret? Thank you, and good morning, uh, Mr Crawford. It was really on the overlap as well, where, uh, I mean, and uh, Dave has already raised the, the main issues, but I was thinking around um, where we've got this sort of <coughs> slight overlap in other cross-party groups. They do, and we're encouraged to have um, joint meetings, maybe one a year or something like that, and because there is a commonality between these groups and it can be quite useful. So it's just something that you may think about in the future. Indeed. I, I mentioned in the opening um, remarks that there, there is an opportunity for us to look at some of the sectors in particular, and there will be sectoral issues which at it's, it, it's, it stages during the, the life of the cross-party working group where I'm sure they'll want to develop a particular argument in a particular area. Now, it might be there's a sectoral interest in golf, for instance, or a sectoral interest in food or culture in general terms. And if there was a, a, a desire at that stage within the cross-party working group um, to take forward a discussion in that area, I think it would be important before any of that proceeded. I did have a discussion with the cross-party working group conveners in these areas to make sure, first of all, they don't feel threatened by that, but it also is there an opportunity for us to do some joint work. Anyone else anything you wish to ask? Right, thank you very much. I think that uh, will inform the committee's discussion. Uh, so thank you very much for your attendance. Uh, we will consider your application shortly after you leave the room, uh, the next agenda item, and we'll let you know as soon as we reasonably can what our conclusions are. Thank you very much, Commissioner. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to appear before you this morning. Thank you. Right, colleagues, agenda item two, consider whether we accord recognition. Comments from members, please. Any comment I was going to make is I think this idea that there are so many cross-party groups, and I wonder if there's any way we can sort of get them together. I, there is a lot of crossover, as Dave said. I can see there's a crossover, particularly as one mentions tourism as well. So I just wonder if we couldn't... The of a heck of a lot of uh, cross-party groups that... Um, a meeting, and if they have a joint meeting of once a year, fine. But is there any limit to them, or are we going to? I just don't. It's more a comment than a criticism or anything. But I just feel there's an awful lot of cross-party groups We're always being asked to join them. And although I've joined, I've put my name down for this one because it's interesting. <clears throat> George. Yes, I know there is some crossover, but when you look at it, golf as a sport as well as a major part of our. Uh, uh, tourism strategy as well so when you look at it from that perspective they have a specific reason to want a group of their own and discuss it uh, Scotch whisky similar argument again as well it's like myself with uh, there is a CPG in neurological conditions and there's a CPG in MS now it's very similar to what Bruce has already said there will be a time that we'll work together on issues but there's a time when you want specifically to talk about that one subject and explore what that community wants to discuss at the Parliament as well. So I, I, I do understand there's quite a lot of cross-party groups, but sometimes I think it's quite... And in this occasion, my own opinion would be that I think it's good that we have a separate uh, actual tourism cross-party group in itself because I think there's a time that you have to work together, but there's a time you've got to talk about the specific subject in its own. Dave? Yeah, it can be. That's a very valid point that George makes, but <clears throat> I would just refer back to my comments about the Sarizes group and the Skin group. Um, what we've done in the Skin group is actually given an assurance to the folk that were in the Sarizes <coughs> group that uh, there would be regular um, 
discussions on Sarises, it would be on the agenda um, pretty much all the time, <coughs> um, because they were worried, obviously, that if they went into a broader skin group, that the Sarises focus, if you like, you know, um, would would be lost. But there were just so many other <coughs> skin conditions like eczema and beshets and oh, a whole range of things. <coughs> and people were coming to me saying, look, we could do with a group for these. And I was very sympathetic, but with my experience of being on, on this committee over the years and, and, and going through the review across party groups and all that, I felt that it wouldn't be helpful to maintain the Sarises group and have a skin group for all other skin conditions. Now, I can tell you, it was not easy to get agreement. And some people left the group, and there was a lot of angst uh, around that. But I felt it was the right thing to do, because we do have a huge number of cross-party groups, and <laughs> I'm being encouraged to help form another two in very specific areas that I don't think have any overlaps with existing things. But there are a lot of cross-party groups that overlap. And if, if the, the two groups that George mentions, you know, the ME, if you... MS. Uh, sorry, MS, George. See? Uh, you started another Rami. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, slip, slip of the tongue. The, the MS uh, issue could be given a, you know, it can be discussed within the broader neurological thing. And I just feel as a committee that um, there's increasing pressure on MSPs. I'm actually going to be writing to you to um, ask the committee to look at, at quorums, uh, for quora for the cross-party groups, because there's a big issue brewing in relation to that, I think. And, and I think it's incumbent on us not just to approve every single group that comes to us, but to look quite critically at what they're trying to do. And, um, yeah, golf is a sport, but it's very much part of the tourism thing. The recreational boating and marine tourism, I think, fits extremely well within, you know, the, the, the broad <coughs> parameter of tourism. And I'm just wondering if we shouldn't say to, to Bruce Crawford that, you know, and ask him and... He can say then he's been instructed by us to do it, to, to meet with the conveners of, of the marine uh, tourism and boating uh, group in particular and, and golf. I wouldn't suggest the economy one. I think that's quite a separate issue. Whiskey, probably the same. Food, culture, possibly. Um, but, you know, I don't think it would do any harm, even of just sending out a message to people that where there are overlaps, they should actually make efforts to link with the existing groups and not just say that's up to those groups, which was Bruce Crawford's answer. I did that with Sarises, uh, and I think that's the right way to do it. So, you know, I mean, um, uh, I wouldn't go to the wall on this, but I, I, I just feel, you know, that we as a committee need to try to do our best to make sure that we're just not rubber stamping everything that comes before us. Well, I'm sure Mr. Crawford will have the opportunity of reading what's now on the record uh, as, as an expression of a view. I, I suspect as a committee we probably should try and create as light a touch while protecting the integrity of parliamentary process and reputation uh, as is possible. And to some extent, the number of groups is self-limiting by the number of MSPs. But, but I think that... The, 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 there's almost certainly um, a case for our having a look at this before the, the session is out, so that uh, when all the groups who have to apply to be recognised in a new session do so, it perhaps is against the backdrop of our having considered some of the issues that are raised here. I'm getting some nodding heads around the group, so I think... Do they have to reapply at the beginning of the new session? Yes, yeah. they fall with the end of the session. Right, thank you. Uh, so there is an opportunity for the new committee to consider uh, that broader picture. But at the end of the day, as I say, just ex expressing a personal view on the matter, not uh, uh, speaking as convener, um, I, I would be relatively inclined to have a light touch. But it is, is our job. And also Margaret raised the point of joint meetings. Um, and I, and I, I hope that Bruce Crawford and the group tack tent of that very appropriate intervention that, that, that groups, while having distinct remits uh, that are approved by this committee, uh, nonetheless should seek and exploit opportunities for joint working where they exist. Right, anyone else wish to say anything on the matter? 
Right, in that case, uh, our members agreed to accord the CPG on tourism recognition. Yes. We are agreed. agreed. Thank you very much. Right, uh, the meeting uh, will now move into private session. Um, not for terribly long, probably. Um, and the press and public should leave. It will come back into public session at the next agenda item.
Uh, thank you. Right, we're now back in uh, public session. And on behalf of the committee, I'd like to make the following statement in relation to a complaint against an MSC, MSP. In accordance with the rules, I will first cover whether the committee agrees with the Commissioner for Ethical Standards in Public Life in Scotland's findings, in fact, and conclusions on the complaint, and then move on to cover the committee's decision on sanctions. The committee has considered a complaint from Connor uh, McElwain about Rosanna Cunningham, MSP. The complaint is that Rosanna Cunningham failed to register on her register of interests shares with a value of more than 1% of the share capital of a company within 30 days of acquiring them. The Commissioner for Ethical Standards in Public Life investigated the complaint and found that Ms. Cunning, Rosanna Cunningham had failed to register and this being the case was in breach of the relevant provisions of the interests of the members of Scottish Parliament Act 2006 and the Code of Conduct. The committee is unanimous in the decisions reached on the complaint. Firstly, it agrees with the findings in fact and the conclusion of the Commissioner. Secondly, it does not consider that the breach in question justifies any sanctions being imposed on Rosanna Cunningham. In reaching the decision on sanctions, the committee was mindful of the purpose of the register of interests, the fact that this was clearly an oversight with no intention of avoiding registering and the decisions of predecessor committees in similar circumstances. The Code explains that information about certain financial interests of members must be registered. The types of financial interest which must be registered are those which might be thought to influence a member's actions, speeches or votes in the Parliament. The register is therefore intended to capture significant financial interests which are of interest to the public in order to maintain transparency and accountability. The cost of the shares held by Rosanna Cunningham was £50 at the time she acquired them and they appear not to have increased in value or be likely to. The committee questions whether shares of such a value or potential value could reasonably be considered to influence a member's actions. The committee also notes that as soon as Rosanna Cunningham became aware of her failure to register, she immediately registered the shares and then took steps to dispose of them. The committee wishes to make clear that it takes all breaches of the Act and the Code seriously. The Register of Interest plays an important role in ensuring transparency and accountability. It is in place so that details of members' significant financial interests are publicly available providing sufficient information to members of the public seeking to scrutinise the behaviour of members. While we do not consider that any sanctions are justified in this case, we remind every member of the importance of maintaining the Parliament's high standard of compliance with all the requirements of the 2006 Act and Code of Conduct, including Register of Interests. It is re the responsibility of every member to understand and meet these requirements and the committee emphasises this to Rosanna Cunningham and all other members of Parliament. Full details of the complaint and the Commissioner's investigation of it will be included in the committee's report, which we expect to be published later this afternoon. Thank you. We now move into private session.